Hey everyone, Artfinity here and I'm back with another drawing video. And this one's going to be interesting because I'm going to show you how to draw a face in three different ways. From profile, from the side, and uh, what the heck is the, last, the front face? But <laughs> anyway, uh, first I'm going to go off and start explaining a little bit about the process I'm going to be using because I'm going to be using it for all three. The first step you need to do is to draw a perfect circle, but but not really though, because I would fail at my own tutorial if I did something like that. But I'm going to draw this circle, which is uh, a reference for the head, and then I'm going to draw a line down the center. I'm not paying too much attention to how long it is right now, because I'm still going to figure things out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two horizontal lines which are space for the eyes so um, just to explain a little bit about these guidelines because I'm going to use them for all three the circle is for the head the line is for the middle of the face and then the horizontal lines here are going to be for the eyes and I'm going to use it for all three so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw this two more times All right, so I've gone ahead and draw these uh, three times, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this one, showing you how to draw the front of the face. This one's going to be three-quarter view, and then this one's going to be profile. And I wanted to start off with this method uh, just to show an interesting way of doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start into this face. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a very non-specific chin line at the beginning. Because if you're anything like me, your drawings tend to be very sketchy and you change your mind a lot. So that's actually why I'm using a pencil that's very light. <laughs> uh, which just helps because if I mess up horribly like uh, I usually do, then it's easier to erase. And it's very nice. And now you'll see that with this horizontal line kind of like there, this face is at the front. And I've broken it into three different squares. And this is just to accommodate for eye space because there's actually a distance of one eye between both eyes. And when I do that, that'll pretty much ensure that they're doing OK. And they're not too close or too far apart. And it's a very useful guideline for that. And what I'm doing now is I'm just going into the eyelashes here. And usually something I like to do is actually draw the eyelashes first before I draw the eye, so that way the eye doesn't look derpy or off. <laughs> so I'm go I've gone ahead and I've drawn the eyelash and this eyelashes, there's two, <laughs> very lightly. And then I'm going in with the circle and kind of connecting both of them, and then that helps me uh, draw the eye in the right place. <laughs> And like I said, there's a distance between, so we're not going to draw one there, but we are going to draw one over here. <laughs> um, so I'm just doing the best that I can to replicate this, the eye on the right. And it's okay if it's not exact. It adds variety to the drawing, right? But so long as it gets the essential point across. Something I'm keeping in mind, though, is I'm at least making them the same space so the eyes look like they... <laughs> look like they kind of make sense and I'm also trying to draw them more or less around the center so it doesn't look like she's looking too far one way or too far another way and there you go there's the eyes and I usually start off with the eyes because uh, if I draw them too far to one side or too far to the other side I can space them out and that's what this middle guideline is for so now I'm going to re-space that and this is why I made the chin line very simplified is because now that I have the eyes in place I have a more solid understanding of what the structure of the head is and then I can actually make a chin that will make sense so this is kind of a guideline for a guideline <laughs> but I'm going ahead and I'm making a line and it's a line that slightly tapers so it's straighter at the edge here and then it slightly tapers off into the corner of the face and I'm making sure that the tapering point is the same on both sides, like you'll see here and there. That way you won't assume she got hit by a bus or whacked by a golf club because her face is deformed. But if that were to happen, that'd be very sad. And now that I have the center of the chin inwards, then I'm going to actually round off the head. 
and then I have a basic face shape. And now that I have the shape and the eyes in the center, it's gonna help me actually add some of the details. And you're gonna see this, these little crosshairs here, that line there and that line there. And slightly below that is a good point to add the nose. And good thing about my style is it's very simplistic. I just draw a dot. <laughs> if there's any line that anyone should get right from this video, it should be that one, right? And then with the mouth, I'm just gonna draw a very simple smile. Just, just a very happy smile because, I don't know, it's, it's a good day. <laughs> Every day where you get to draw is a good day. And kind of keeping with actual, I guess, proportions of drawing. If you're to look at a face, unless it's far, like, widely outstretched, the mouth usually meets with the corner of the tear ducts, which is kind of creepy. If you're to look at a reference of a face, take the corners of the mouth and draw them straight up, you would find that they actually align with the eyes, which is kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know who takes the time to notice this stuff, but it's really creepy. And then I'm just adding a, a small detail for the teeth and then you'll see that they're there. And then I'm just going up into both of these eyes, doing the best that I can to make them symmetrical, but not exactly. And I'm just adding in the little eye wrinkle folds for eyelids that are things. There's so many different terminologies for eyes that I'm never going to get them straight. <laughs> uh, there's like eyelashes, eyebrows, eyelids, eye eyes. <laughs> there's so many words, man. Like, you can't get any of them right. But uh, I'm just refining the head a little bit. And then what I'm doing and what I'm going to do to draw the eyebrows assuming that that's the thing, is I'm actually going to follow the curve of the top of the eye, these, <laughs> and I'm going to go slightly above it, and I'm actually going to redraw that, and I'm just doing the same on this side. I'm not doing too good a job at explaining what I'm doing, but I'm hoping that showing is going to help more than explaining for days. But what I'm going to do with the ears is I'm going to actually pick the middle of the eye. So like around here-ish. And I'm going to go to the corner and draw them here. And of course, they're stylized anime ears. So they're actually practically non-existent. And by the end of this drawing, I doubt you'll even see them. But for anybody who wants to know how to, <laughs> those are there. And now that I have that in, I'm going to draw the neck. And a good point of reference for that is just the eyes again going down from like this point. Um, and it depends. Again, like with any drawing video, this is just my way of doing things. And if you use this result, you'll get this outcome. But if you want to change things up, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> and there we go. I'm just refining it here. And again, this is in light pencil because I'm not going to commit to these details until later. And speaking of not committing to details, I'm not going to draw the hair on this yet. I'm going to leave this face the way it is to show you how it makes sense in relation to the other faces. Because these guidelines I drew are actually going to help us draw it from all three angles. So going back and taking a small point of reference from the chin and the top of the head, I'm going into the three-quarter view now. Now, like I said, the circle is the head, this is the center line, and then that's the eye line. But the thing with the center line is because it's in three quarters, I am going to move it three quarters. <laughs> Makes sense, right? And this might seem like it's useless now, but you'll see the use for it later. And essentially what I'm going to do is, again, still measuring for where the chin was. The, uh, the idea I have in mind is that this is the same character, so they should keep their same proportions. And that's why I go with this method, because if the guidelines work on this face, the nose should still say stay in the relative position. And what I'm going to do now is make another rough indication of the chin, just like I did in the last one. So I'm making this line here connect with the bottom of that one at a slight angle. And then with this one, I'm going to make it connect all the way to the back of the circle. And then I'm going to extend a little bit past the circle. Kind of like that to make this shape, which might look like, what the heck are you doing? But it'll it'll make sense one day. I promise. <laughs> and back with these eye guidelines that I have, I'm still going to be using them. And because this face is three quarters, 
I'm just going to break it into thirds again, but the way I'm breaking it down is much more angled because this way, this eye is over here and then that eye is like squished almost into the corner and that's what's gonna give like a three quarter view effect. And drawing the eye again, just so I have a point of reference for everything else, I'm drawing it at a slightly different angle just essentially I'm thinking of this, but what would happen if I turned it that way slightly? So it gets a little more narrow. And again, following the same thing for the eye before. And just for visual interest, instead of having her stare into space, we'll make her like look across her shoulder. So I drew in the eyelids or eyelashes things again before I draw the eye. So it'll help me with the placement of the eye. That way I never draw the eye too big or too small and then figure out how the heck I'm going to fit eyebrows and eyelashes to it. Which is very helpful. And then I have an eye looking off to the side. And with this three quarter line I drew here, I know exactly where the dot of the nose was. So finding the center line, I'm moving it slightly over. And then I'm putting it there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it curve slightly. Not, not too much. We'll, we'll do this more in the profile, but we're just adding a little point to it to show, oh, look, this face is angled. And then with the space I have in between there, I'm going to work on this eye in this little last quadrant here, which should be almost visible depending on how intense the three-quarter view is. But just a tiny circle, which is very flat. And you'll notice that these circles actually got flatter for the eyes. So here it's relatively flat and then here it looks like more squished on both ends of the face. Drawing in the eye wrinkle fold lid lash things. <laughs> then with the mouth, I still have the guideline for it so I know it should be here. And drawing in the mouth. I'm very good at explaining things if you can't tell. <laughs> um, so I'm just drawing that in. And I think I've actually drawn it up a little too high. But I could probably fix that. Or, yeah, so we'll just go with something like this for the moment. Change them up a little bit. And then this is going to be the most helpful part of making it look like it's three quarters. With this side of the face, I'm actually going to make the cheek protrude a little bit. It's going to go out and then it's going to go back in. This is again being very subtle. So you'll see that where the eye is going in, that squishes in. And then from the nose to the mouth, that squishes back out just because she has cheekbones. And then moving down here, from this point back to the chin, that's why that guideline was helpful because making that very subtle arc right there will help the face look like it's turned. And then when it hits the main center line here for the chin, which is here, it also hits there. So that'll help keep that in order. And then what I'm going to do with the chin line from here is that's why I made that guideline. I'm just going to extend it and then that'll automatically give you the second side. And you're like, oh, wow, that was easy. That's almost as fun as bashing your head into a wall. And with this line here in the center, it'll become useful because if you draw an angle like that, that'll give you the ear guideline. <laughs> and first I'm going to draw in the neck. So I'm just going on and drawing the neck inwards, which should be about where this eye line was here. And then in this view, that's where the neck is going to be. And an interesting thing while I was looking at reference pictures, because those are good, is the neck actually doesn't go straight down. It's slightly angled. <laughs> it's almost like there's a spine connected to it or something. But going back to this line, you can make the curve uh, that's going to meet up with the ear. And then if you want to, there's a little line of shading under the chin there. And then back to what we were doing with the ear before, just finding the middle. And I'm not too focused on the details of the ear because I have a bad tendency of figuring things out as I'm working on it later. Like this is just the basic roughs of what I want everything to be. Um, 
just fixing up this eye a little bit, just showing that, you know, minute adjustments are always good. <laughs> and then eyelashes, everything's squished on this side still, and the eyelashes don't make it past the eye here, so they don't make it past the eye here, still keeping like these guideline structures in place. And we're going to notice that the head is like weirdly egg-shaped here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull this back slightly because the head isn't actually perfectly round. Hence why I said we're not going to keep this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work on a slight angle for it and making the angle a bit more believable. Uh, it might seem like she's an alien or something because her head is really wonky now, but when it is accommodated and adorned with floof on it then it should look right again um so that's the face at three quarters using the same guidelines as this one and then with this one we're going to still use the same ones over here and my apologies if i'm not trying these exactly online <laughs> my view is kind of skewed i'm not directly overhead like the camera is but what i'm going to do again is find the bottom of the chin and then of course the top of the head and I'm going to draw this weird chin thing again, which will almost not show up at all in this one. I'm going to break this into thirds again. So this looks exactly like we were going to draw when the face was in the front, but what we're going to essentially do is use this half of it to turn it into the face. And if you wanted to switch which side of the face it was on, you would just draw it on either this side or this side, but just for cohesiveness looking this way we're going to draw it this way <laughs> so what i'm going to do with the this part of the eye is i'm going to draw the eye in now and because this is in profile view it's at its flattest so you would actually be surprised how flat the eye gets um, and then just with the pupil it's actually very flattened as well it's hardly even round anymore You'll see like that, it just got flatter and flatter as time went on. So there's the eye pupil looking thing. <laughs> and then I'm going to extend this line over here, find out where the nose was again. So just still following the point of reference I had before, I know it'll be like here-ish. <laughs> and the good news about this is the top of that circle going straight down should give you where the nose was. So that way they don't have excessively pointy sharp noses. And if that doesn't work, then you can always just adjust it to your own characters. Because, like I said, you don't need to do everything I'm doing. It's not the way drawing works. But what I'm going to do now is, from this point of the nose, I'm going to have a slight curve from the top of the forehead here that bends in, kind of like it did there. And then bend back out. And then that'll give you the first point of the nose. And now that I'm looking at it, I think that I drew the eye wrong. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and fix this. It should be a little closer to the end of here. So my apologies to everyone who <laughs> already committed to doing that and is now throwing the pencil across the room and cursing me beyond the grave and, and whatnot. But eh. It's just a minute adjustment. You'll, you'll see I didn't even change it that much, but uh, just drawing it closer to the end of the square. And now that I have that in, I'm just going to draw a very general line. It's, it's not anything to commit to yet. And kind of like I did with this, I'm going to hyperextend this to the back of the head. So I'm drawing this very basic line, which kind of meets close to the top of where this line is, just down, it's very close to that, just whoop, very close to there. And then what I'm going to do with this line is drag it straight across again, just whoop. <laughs> and with this circle, drag it over until it makes kind of a cohesive line. At least making it believable.
and this is just taking a lot of adjusting on my part. Again, this is why I recommend light pencil. It is good. I also have a clicky pencil here, which I would be using if I were on my own. But for the sake of the tutorial, I wanted to differentiate the guidelines from the details. And now back to this. What I did is I extended the circle past slightly, making sure it has a consistent arc that goes back into the chin. Because this actually does that with real people too. It's actually kind of creepy. Uh, it's also cool as well. But with this line that we had for the chin, and of course this second line of the eye is going to be your friend because that becomes the back of the neck. <laughs> and then that line here becomes the first part of the neck. And then drawing the little like under chin thing. <laughs> the under chin thing. My explaining abilities are unrivaled. <laughs> it's kind of weird when you talk and draw at the same time though. Um, and then what's useful about this is this first guideline for the eye, like it was here, becomes the ear line. So now you have the ear, it's not too far apart, it's not in a weird place, and it's like, wow, that's kind of cool and neat and whatnot. And what I really like about this method is like essentially the same structure that you have for the guidelines will work for any angle of the head, because I use the same one for all three. And it's kind of looking like whoop. And then, of course, the mouth is here, just following those guidelines again. So I'm just going to draw the mouth. And this is a part where you can add lips if you want to. And if you do, it's just a very subtle tweak here <laughs> and here. And again, it, it's a lot of very subtle things that make it look like you actually know what you're doing when in fact you have no idea. So what I did is I added like a bend of the nose here and then the lip flap there, the mouth, which I drew in first. I drew in the shape of the mouth before I went in with the uh, other part of it. And then the bottom of the lip is just a little more subtle. I'm adding a curve that goes back in on itself here back into the chin, and then I'm just gonna add a little tapering point there. And this line I'll actually draw darker so it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. I'm also gonna add a row of teeth to this probably. So you'll see the line tapers in, then back out, then back in, goes into the mouth, out, in, and then back out. <laughs> Uh, which is, it doesn't need to be this intricate. Honestly, the way I had it before is you could just leave out the lips entirely and it should still look okay. You don't need to make all of your characters have facial faces. <laughs> Good job, me. And then just going back in with the eyes. I'm drawing that there and the eyelash there. More squished in and actually did that the wrong way. This is a very tricky thing, but remember how I said it follows the line of the eyebrows? It's not like that, it's like this. <laughs> I'm glad I almost made that mistake because then I get to mention it, but yeah. And then if you want to add a little bit of detail to this profile, what you could do is just add in like little eyelashes there and give the indication of like, oh look, there's a second eye there. And then that easy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, from there, this is basically the end of the tutorial part of this for drawing the different faces. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go through, probably speed it up, go into the speed paint mode, <laughs> go into speed paint mode and add the details. Uh, but if there's anything I want to mention, I'll mention it at the end of it. Uh, this is really the part where just figuring out character designs will help because learning how to draw them from different angles will be bad. But that's not what this is. This tutorial is about. It's about how to draw faces. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Right. 
that's pretty much what I got for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you watched it all the way through. And if you actually followed the tutorial either with this design or with your own character, um, I would love to see it. So if you're on Instagram, please use the hashtag SaveCrow and uh, I'll actually be able to see what you guys came up with. So, yep, that's pretty much what I have. And if you guys found this video helpful and you know somebody else who might be struggling with drawing faces, uh, please consider sharing it. You know, if it helped you, it might help them. But yep, that's what I got. Bye! Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, feel free to subscribe, and also hit the bell icon. That way you actually find out whenever I do anything with my life. And if you want to keep up with the streams that I'll be having, I stream every weekend, and I also have a schedule, so you can check that out. But yep, that's pretty much what I got for you. Bye! <laughs>